guys, Lacey here from Hooked on Owls, stopping in to do a yarn slash fiber haul video all about my experience at the Michigan Fiber Festival on Saturday. We did our podcaster meetup and I did a whole bunch of shopping and it was great. The end. No, I'm just kidding. I have way too much to show you and talk about. It's ridiculous. So, um, Saturday, actually I think the Fiber Festival went several days. 14th to the 18th. Here's a little pamphlet they handed out. Michigan Fiber Festival. It was amazing. Oh my gosh. That place was huge. Like stupid huge. And it took me all day and then some <laughs> to go through everything. And I still, I know there's places I missed out on. it. I missed out. I didn't even get to see the goats. But I saw some alpacas. And Chevrolet took a bunch of pictures of the goats, so a bunch of us kind of swapped pictures because we didn't get that many. So I'll pop up. Um, some pictures will be my own. Some pictures are from other podcasters whom I will mention as we get into it. But first off, let's get started with the journey, you guys. I went to bed about 2 a.m. ish. And I woke up about quarter to five because I overslept. And he was quarter to five? I don't know. I think I got like three hours of sleep. Needless to say, there was not enough concealer to cover the dark circles that were under my eyes that morning. <laughs> but I didn't even care. I was wide awake. So I got ready and I ran out and I got some um, badges to hold our passes and stuff for the day for my mom and I. And then I went and picked her up after filling up the tank with gas because it's like a th just over a three hour drive for us. And I got us some coffees and some waters. I went and picked her up and we made our trip over there. And surprisingly, it went pretty fast. Um, but we don't often get a chance to just kind of sit around and have adult conversations with other women because her husband likes to talk about farming and Josh likes to talk about gaming and hunting and kids talk about what gross boys talk about. <laughs> so I won't get into that. You don't need to know. Boys are gross. <laughs> so it was nice to just have a nice adult female conversation about fibery things on the way down. We got talking so much that at one point we were over talking the GPS and we missed the proper exit. And we had to flip around, but it wasn't that bad. <laughs> Um, I probably would have filmed this last night. However, I honestly talked so much on Saturday that I almost kind of lost my voice yesterday. I don't know what happened. I don't talk that much. It was awesome. <laughs> so after we got there, I went and checked in with Sue, who does the um, events coordinating at the Fiber Festival. And she showed me where the area was that we'd be doing our meetup. And after that, we hit up a couple buildings and we just started going through. I think we started outside in the um, shopping area, which I want to show you this real quick before I get too far. Like, here's a list of all the activities. How crazy. And let me find. I don't think we're, I don't know if she put us in there or not. Let me look. Saturday. Mm, yeah, no, they were supposed to, but they didn't put us in there. Anyway, here's a map of the fairgrounds. And do you see this? That's one, two, three sections of vendors. Those are all vendors and their locations. And honestly, it was still confusing. I had to I ended up asking one of the girls in one of the other buildings how to get to the other location because I knew I was missing some. I missed a lot. It was ridiculous. We spent the first two hours in the first building and it only had two rows. <laughs> we were very thorough in the first building, but by the end, we were kind of rushing, which was unfortunate because the end one had some of the ones I really wanted to see. So we started off in the outside area and... Um, right away i told my mom okay let's do our first walk through look at everything check out prices you know things like that see what we really want 
and then we'll come back and get it. I made it two thirds the way down the first row before I bought something because I couldn't help it. <laughs> Pretty sure that happened last time too. Um, there was some amazing stuff right from the get-go and I knew I really wanted a lot of it. I ended up did going, did going back. Mm -mm. I ended up going back and getting something from one of the very first places we looked at actually. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. But the first thing I purchased was from this place. I'm not even sure. Romnedale, Rom, Rom, I can't even say it. Rom, Romnedale, Shetland Sheep and Sheepdogs. That's a weird word. <laughs> anyway, um, don't really have a site. It's got like an email and a phone number. Uh, www.angelfire.com slash mi slash Ron Needledale. How do you say that? R-O-M-Y-L-D-A-L-E. I didn't know there was an L in Ron Needledale. I Maybe I was saying it wrong. Anyway, they had mostly fiber um, from what I can remember. And my idea for this trip, I wanted to buy some yarn, obviously. Um... But I'd been doing some research on drop spindles, so I really wanted to get a, drop, a top, top roll drop spindle and some fiber. I don't plan on getting a spinning wheel because they're wicked expensive. Maybe someday when there are no children around to break it and I have that kind of money and time to invest in it, at that time I may do so. But I kind of wanted just to do it for fun. Just to, you know, see if I could, I guess. I'm not sure. Um... But I ended up getting this. It and I don't it doesn't even say what the blend of this one is, but I saw the color and I bought it anyway. I'm not even sure what the blend is, but I'm freaking in love with this fiber, you guys. I bet you can't tell why. <laughs> it has tiny, tiny flecks of sparkles in it, which you can kind of catch on camera. Yeah, aren't they cute? black with this gorgeous tealy turquoise in this like magenta color. This is probably the best fiber that I picked up while I was there. And it was the first one and it really is in great great spinning shape. Isn't it so pretty? Look at that. I, there was one on the shelf and there was no way I was not getting it. I just realized I forgot, I forgot something else out in the living room. Gosh dang it. Yeah, there was one on the shelf and I had to have it. This is what I wanted. I'm going to make some amazing yarn, but I am saving this one till I get better at it because this one is so pretty and I have to make something amazing with it. And the next thing I bought is out in the living room, so I'll be right back got them. Okay, so when I made it down, let me move that. When I made it down to the end of that first row, seeing as how I had already um, broken the seal of buying things, there was a shop going out of business. I don't remember the name of it. And I didn't get a card from them because, I mean, they were going out of business, but pretty much everything was on sale. And they mostly had fibers and um like little pardon the crinkling little things of extra fibers that you could put in and mix in with your other fibers they had lots of like stellinas and things like that in different colors and each one of their um little bags they had in a bin and the one bin was like buy three for a dollar so i paid 60 cents and i got three inserts which look crazy in this light okay so this first one looks pretty much just like that it's this crazy gorgeous midnight blue and you get like a little roll of it and it's super soft I get no idea what the blend is on it but I don't really even care I mean let's get real my goal is to use these ones to mix in with I'm gonna get maybe like a cream or a gray to mix these in with I'm thinking so there's the first one. And I got this 
gorgeous bright eh, it's not quite maybe not quite that color shield it from the light eh. okay it's 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 about that color really it's just a little more teal than blue in real life um it's so pretty it's got a bit more of a green tinge in real life but it's it it's so pretty you guys it's so soft I think this one's a little less wooly, like a little less coarse. We'll say a little less coarse. It almost feels like, um, if any of you have ever gone to a hair salon or worked at a hair salon where you're getting a perm or you're doing a perm and you pull the cotton rope from the box to put around your hair for the perm, <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. But it's so soft. So I have that one. And then this one, it is so cool. It is this tuft of this sparkly, I think the dark blue is sparkly too, and the other, the later one isn't, but this purple is blowing out in camera. It looks super blue, but it's super purple, like, like purple, eel, purple people eater, like super purple. And then down here, this part where it looks purple is actually like a bright magenta. And it's got this tiny little tuft of white hidden in there. But it looks like super cosmic. Except for it's just not really blue like it's looking in the camera. Hmm. Super purple. I'll take some pictures. Actually, I've already taken pictures. So I'll post pictures beginning throughout and at the end. So I'm sure you'll see plenty of pictures of it. But oh my gosh, it's so cool. So I got those three from a shop at the end. Like I said, they were going out of business and they ended up, I was wearing some buttons already. So they gave me another one and it's yarn and it says, think outside the swatch. You'll probably never get that to focus. Mm, yeah, I don't know why I'm trying to show you. I'll just pop a picture in. It says, think outside, outside the swatch. So I thought that was pretty nice of them to give me that adorable little pin. So we rounded the corner and that building and we walked all the way back through and I don't think I bought anything for a little while after that. Um, I'm going to put these away so pardon the crinkling. We made it through the rest of the building. It was the big white building I think it was. And then we made it through the little red building next to it and by that time, so we got there at 9.30. I think it was getting close to like noon and we were getting hungry. So we went over to the barbecue place that was there and we got a like a barbecue brisket sandwich. That was pretty good. Um, and then we got back up and went and looked for the rest of the vendors because I knew um, Cat Sock Fibers was going to be there and I knew Kelly from the Miller Girls was going to be there. So I had to go see those guys because Cat Sock Fibers, like I said in my Ann Arbor video, made these amazing wool washes and I really, really wanted to get some. And I couldn't find her shop on the second trip round. I think we were just in too big a hurry. So I knew she was there and I wanted to go get some. So we ended up asking one of the vendors um, where the other building was. And of course it's this huge building, which I thought was just for like the sheep and the alpaca. I didn't realize they had shopping in there too. So we made our way over there and this one had way better airflow, so it was not as awful. Because this hat, I guess I didn't say, looks blown out. It looks white, but it's, um, this is the Happy Little Narwhal color from Tiffany and Ethan from Woolen Homestead. I made this hat just to wear to the event, and it was, like, in the 80s. And I was one of only about maybe four people wearing a knitwear garment. <laughs> Myself, my mother, Cheverelle, and then I saw, I think, one other girl wearing... What was she wearing? I think she was wearing a hat, but it was just like a little, tiny little Tam style. <laughs> so I made it over to the other building and I feel like that's where I really did the most spending. And I'm okay with it because I got some amazing yarn and some amazing deals there. I, let me think the first place we went to. I think it was probably this one. Is the first place I bought from. Now, I found this one shop, and I think I got some video or maybe a picture of it. 
It's called Yarn Geek Fibers. And I'm so sorry, I forgot your name. I friended you on Instagram and I can't think of your name and I apologize because you were just the sweetest and your yarn might be one of my favorites from this haul, I won't lie. I'm gonna preface this with saying, when I went, I told myself, no teal yarn skeins, no teal yarn skeins because I have so much, so much. But I was in a speckle mind frame, like hardcore, I wanted speckles and the yarn geek fibers totally fit that and her prices were amazing and her yarn is so pretty i had the hardest time picking but her minis are what really pulled me in because you guys look at these oh my gosh how gorgeous are these little minis they're not even little they're like super long and they look pretty good on the camera too. <laughs> so this first one here, this is, I'm not sure if Super Geek is the base. I think Super Geek might be her base, but I think I got them all on the same. I think I got them all on the same base because I really liked it. Um, it is a Super Wash 3-ply fingering, 75% Cordell and 25% 25 nylon, and it's 60 yards. This one is called Grace Hopper. And it's so gorgeous. And then this one, same blend, same yards, is called Boxcar Gallery. This one. This one stole my heart from the second I saw it and drew me in. And this pretty much made me buy the rest of them because they all just went so cute together. And this last one, Gertrude Bell Elian. El Elian? I don't know. I'm sure that has some sort of meaning that I don't, <laughs> I don't get and I'm okay with it. But, oh, you guys, this is like the best thing ever. <laughs> it makes me very happy to look at. This is exactly the kind of yarn I wanted to find when I went. And I'm probably going to end up having to get maybe a full skein of this because I'm slightly obsessed with this one. But I did get a full skein. Now, I don't think this one, I think this one is unnamed. This is called Testing, Testing, One of a Kind. I think she had a couple, and I think it was, as the name suggests, it was a test. Um, but I know she said it was doing pretty well, so she might make it regular. So if you like it, let her know. This one... I believe it's the same, yep, same blend. So the Super Geek must be the the blend for all of these. Super Geek. Yarns are uh, usually named for women who made, un, made groundbreaking discoveries in the sciences. Oh, that's cool. Please look them up and be inspired. They are amazing. I'm going to have to do that because that's kind of a neat idea. So it actually, she also puts a project card on here. So it comes with a little project card, pattern, size, yarn, ounces, pat, project notes, washing instructions, start date, finish date, who it's made for, the name of the project. But this is the yarn. I guess I could show you that instead of just blabbing about the card. Do you see that? Oh, isn't that gorgeous? It just has a little bit of everything. I can get real close there without washing it out. Mm. This lighting situation is not ideal. I apologize. I do have a light picked out that I've yet to order, but I have one picked out, so hopefully that will help this. But yeah, maybe if I. Mm. It's got these little pops of orange and purple. There's teal light speckles of green. I want to say yellow, but I think that's just the orange kind of bleeding out. And it's just, this is my speckled dreams come true. And I love it. And I'm super excited to have this. And it's super squishy. Super squishy. It's funny because it's a fingering, but it's so squishy and plump that 
up close it looks more like DK until you just kind of pull it out and work with it. It's one of those that's so squishy it looks a different weight. <laughs> and I'm okay with that because that always makes for some of the softest projects. Where's her card go? I have her card here. Again, it's Yarn Geek Fibers and she has yarngeekfibers.com. She is also on Instagram. If this Ah, Sarah. I should know that. Sarah's my friend's name. My best friend's name. Sarah Hollinsworth, head yarn geek. I love that. Head yarn geek and owner from... Okay. Indie dyed yarn and spinning fiber. She did, I think, half the... Half the shop was yarn and the other half was fiber, if I remember correctly, but her shop was so cute. She had these little banners up top that said Yarn Geek and like the little triangle flags. Drew me right in. I was obsessed. I sat and talked to her for a little bit. And like I said, she is on Ravelry and Instagram and Facebook and has YarnGeekFibers.com. And her yarn is go gorgeous. And she is so sweet. I had a nice little chat with her. So this, like I said, is probably one of my favorite parts of my yarn haul. I won't even lie. It's, I say one of, but I love them all. I like that one too. So pretty. Love it, Sarah. You're an amazing, amazingly talented dyer. And I cannot wait to see you. I hope you come to Ann Arbor. I feel like I asked you if you'd be there, and I feel like you said yes. So hopefully I'll see you in October. Okay. So moving on after that... Let me think where she was. I ended up at, mm, see now, <laughs> I have one problem with this next shop that I went to. And I laughed so hard because Kim asked me where I got one of my minis from and I thought she meant this one and I got confused, but I had to look this up because I half remembered the name of this shop. It was Rainbow Rapunzel. Yeah, Rainbow Rapunzel. Um, and the only reason I don't remember the name is because this is the only tag I got with the yarn. I didn't get a card. There was no tags on the yarn. Um, this j literally just says mini skein, approximately 80 yards, 20 grams, 80% superwash merino, and 20% nylon. So at least I know what this one is that I got, which I like. I kind of just picked it up on a whim. Even though it's not really my colors, I was in a green mood that day. <laughs> So I have this really interesting green and like brown chartreuse -y, almost like a burnt red speckles and black speckles. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> no idea what I'll ever do with it. Maybe I'll just put it in a blanket or something. I don't know. But I picked it up on a whim. And I'm glad I did because at least I know something about this. Now, I really like this yarn. It's not typically my color either because it's, ooh really blown out. It is not that color green. Mm. This makes it look a little bit more yellow where it's a little bit more chartreuse. Like not, not golden but like grassy in real life. Again, I'll insert pictures so you can see it. But it's got this gorgeous speckle job on it. Very tonal with some just light, light speckles. See? really 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 pretty and it's not I wouldn't say it's black maybe like a super dark green with tiny little itsy bitsy flecks of orange every once in a great while it's very pretty and it's very soft I have no idea what it is I'm guessing it's a super wash nylon blend I guess it's a fingering weight um, let's see if I can maybe figure out the ply here. Let's see. Three ply. <laughs> and like I said, I never would have known if I didn't halfway remember my mom saying something about, I thought she said Rapunzel. Rainbow Rapunzel, I thought it was. So I found it in the vendor list. It's the only reason I even halfway remember the name. You'd think a vendor would stick a card on with their product. Apparently that's not always the case. Either way, I really liked the yarn and it was, I mean, I had a nice conversation with the lady, or my mom did. I liked it. I actually also got two little 
blips of fiber while I was there to practice with. Um, I ended up, one was like a turquoise and one was like a green with purple in it. And I just kind of rolled them into a little ball because they were just kind of wad. So I just kind of like broke them apart and made them into a ball to make it a little bit easier to spin. I'm probably going to have to brush it out a little bit because this one was kind of, it was a little bit harder to work with. That black one's going to be so amazing to work with. So yeah, I did get two little fiber things from her for like a buck. So I really like the yarn and the colors. They don't quite look like that in real life, but again, they're gorgeous and I really enjoy it. I, I just wish that there would have been a tag on both of these. With at least the vendor's name. Things you should think about if you're a vendor. Make sure you have your name on your products and what your products are. Just saying. Um, and then I think at this point we were running close to out of time. So I ran over and found, who did I find next? I think I found Cat Sock Fibers next, which I'm totally blanking on your name now. And I've been following you on Instagram forever. Apologies. <laughs> but um, unfortunately she, she didn't have any of the middle child with her. But I probably will be contacting her for a custom order because I still really want it. I just remember it was like, I want to say a teal and black. So naturally it called to me. Um, I did end up getting two of the wool washes, which I'm super excited about. And they're blowing out like crazy. Maybe if I put them in a shadow. <laughs> um, they're not really anything like super crazy design. This one was kind of a little flower-ish shape. This one almost looks like either like a seashell or a pumpkin. I don't know. They don't really have any smell to them. They kind of smell like un unscented. Let me see. Yeah. I think I had a paper written somewhere with what they're made of. Maybe not. I know she said they're just all natural ingredients, but you just run them in the water. It's like it's kind of cloudy. And then you just soak it. You don't have to rinse it or anything. And it's supposed to be pretty good for your wash. So I'm going to I'm gonna try that for some of my soaks and see how that goes. And even though I'm not the biggest DPN, DP, DPN, <laughs> I'm tired. The biggest DPN fan, I, um, I couldn't resist buying one of her cozies because you guys, hello Harry Potter. Which she said she read all the books, but she's not the biggest fan. But that's okay, because she still makes it for those of us who are. Hello, Deathly Hollows. How cute are you? So, yeah, um, I did I occasionally use DPNs when I have to. My Baker set doesn't fit in here, but this one does. And I think it was Aaron. I think it was you, Erin. I hope it was you. Showed us how she uses hers for her circulars. So I'll probably be doing that too because I do use circulars quite often. But it's really the snaps on this bad boy. Like this is not, they're not going anywhere. The snaps are amazing. The fabric is fantastic and the print is awesome. So I'll probably be picking up some of these from her either next time I see her or ordering them from her to give away as um, some prizes for you guys because I really like them and she's awesome. She's got a little cute little square card that's going to blow out and you won't be able to see. I don't want to even try. <laughs> Everybody I talk about today that I know other than obviously the one with the green yarn, I'll put the links below. So if you are interested in any of these amazing yarns and fibers that I show you, um, pop down and you can see the list of everybody with their links so you can go check out what they have in stock or where they'll be so you can get some stuff from them too. So then I ended up finding Kelly from the Miller Girls, which, um, if you've watched any of the previous episodes, you know that she did do the dyeing for my Jareth shawl, which... I love. I know Erin said she went and um, ordered some yarn to make one too because she loved it, which is awesome. So I went just to see what she had with her. And 
I had a hard time picking. I really did. I had the hardest time picking. I knew I wanted a fingering weight, although one of her worst is kind of called to me, but I did get a fingering weight. And originally I bought this with Abigail in mind <laughs> because it's so girly. <laughs> Let's see. I guess I, maybe I should have left it wound up. Let me see. <laughs> I'm going to wind it back up so you can see it a little bit better. It's this gorgeous creamy white and it has these hot pink, hot pink, you guys, like neon hot pink, purple and teal speckles on a sparkle base pretty amazing. And like I said, I bought it originally thinking, well, maybe I'll make something for Abigail out of it. Do I have any clue what I'll make out of it for her? Oh, that was the worst skeining job. Maybe I shouldn't show you that. That was bad. <laughs> no idea what I'll make out of it. But look at that. Isn't it so pretty, pretty, pretty? Oh, mm, I just love it. I couldn't leave without it. Maybe I justified saying I'd buy, I'd make something for Abigail out of it just so I could buy it. And then I'll end up making something for myself. Her yarn is so freaking soft and squishy, you guys. I can't even, and it always smells so good. I can't even begin to tell you how soft and squishy this yarn is. Oh, it does not want to focus. It's probably this weird camera app I have to use to get my microphone to work. But at least my sound quality should be good. Mm, if I do this, no, you can see that sparkle though, cause oh my goodness, her bases are so sparkly, and the color is just stunning. And like I said, I was all about the speckles this trip. I couldn't, I, I could not resist them. Speckles were, were calling to me. Look at that, look at that skeining job. I will never be a professional skeiner, so you know, I mean, cross that off the list. Maybe if I twist it a little bit more. <laughs> but yes, this yarn is apps. Oh, let me open that up and show you guys that because that was pretty. <gasps> Look at those speckles. Oh, they're so vibrant and pretty. I'm slightly obsessed. No idea what it will become. It'll probably sit on my shelf. I know Abby will see it when she gets home and probably claim it anyways. So I'll have to think of what I can make her out of that. And then when I was there, I was about to check out. And then I noticed she had fiber, like these little bags of fiber just sitting off to the side. And you guys, like I thought this one was really cool to look at. And then I read the contents of it. You ready for this? Yak, cashmere, merino, and silk. Yak, cashmere, merino, and silk. Oh my gosh. And it came in this huge, I, I used a bit of it, I won't lie. So it kind of looks a little tore up from the floor up because I did use some already. Came in this huge roll. It's beyond soft. It is so stinking silky soft. Back looks like that. And I'm slightly obsessed with it. Look at that. It's so pretty and fluffy. It has yak and cashmere. It was not too expensive either. So I was super excited. And I was so excited to the point that, let me show you the other purchase I got. Actually, let me show you her card real quick. Oh, I just lost, oh. I guess I probably should have told you. This amazing gorgeousness is a superwash merino, 75%, 20% nylon, and 5% Stellina. 438 yards for 100 grams. Mm-hmm. And here's her card. She has a Facebook, which I'll link below. I'll never get these things to focus. Mm. Someday I'm going to have to just invest in a camera someday. I have a camera from like 2003, 2005 maybe, back when I thought it was amazing. 
And I, I tried to take a picture with it the other day and that thing looked so bad. Off topic. So the other thing I bought, I ended up going back and grabbing it from the first vendor around lunchtime. Um, was my Top World Drop Spindle. Because she had a great price on it. And it was the style I was looking for. It has the, the insert or the cut right there to put your yarn on. But I don't know if you can see that. Now, this is the first time I've spun. So it looks awful. <laughs> Keep that in mind and please be nice about it. Um, it goes anywhere from like... Mm, fingering to bulky <laughs> but it's so fun it's never gonna focus either mm. if I do it like that I might just have to take some pictures and pop them in for you it's got all the colors See, I'm undoing it now because I pulled it off got all the gorgeous colors it's got like these it literally has all the colors it's grays and dark royal blues and peachy pinks and whites and purples and pops of teal and it it's more of an art yarn <laughs> um I don't know what I'll be doing with it but it's really soft and even though it's um extremely inconsistent I still think it's really fun to look at and I still really I'm enjoying it and that's all that really matters now I know with the way this one is compared to the um black yarn that I got this one definitely probably could have used a brushing or something but the black yarn will probably be a lot smoother and a lot more consistent Whereas this one does have a couple little chunks here and there. But I kind of like it. I really kind of like the different like marled and you know the thickness and how it twists up with all the different little pieces stuck in there. It gives it a really cool look. I really just wish it would focus. Mm. You can see you get the idea. So yeah. I spent um pretty much all day pretty much all day Sunday or at least all morning Sunday playing with this just to see just to try it out and figure it out and there were some times that I had some really nice consistent flows of probably around like a fingering to sport weight and then I would have like a place where I'd have to stop and start and I would end up with a little bump and a little fuzzy but it's okay it's just for me and it's just for fun just to do something different on occasion it was very it was very relaxing almost compared to some other crafts that I've done and knowing that I'm gonna get to do something with this even if it's just a weird funky hat for myself like it's kind of it's kind of entertaining and it's it's different I like it though so after that getting that fiber um, we was just about time for the podcaster meetup at that point. And I knew I went to loop real quick, but I really didn't want to buy any more fiber just in case I didn't like it. Spinning that is. Um, so I didn't get a loop bump like I was thinking I might do. I was like, I've already bought enough fiber to get me started. I can always buy some more later. But Leading Man Fiber Arts was there. And I knew I had to get something from them. Um, I had the hardest time picking. Everything I wanted from them was, of course, the gorgeous teals and grays and blacks. And I decided to still stay away from that. I shouldn't say that. I had a gray, I had a gray skein in my hand. Um, I was running slightly low on the funds by this point after you know, gas and everything else. So I only got a 50 gram skein. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it either. I'm sure I'll find something to pop it in with, but I had to have something from them because I hear such amazing things about them. And I know like Amber from the Yarn Hoarder podcast just raves about them and she loves their yarn. So I got this gorgeous beauty. 
and that was my elbow. <laughs> um, this is Showstopper Intermission in the colorway Starting Point. A fingering weight, 231 yards for 50 grams, 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. It looks really minty in the screen. Let me see there. That's pretty close. It is just a super bright green. Kind of like a um, kind of like a Kelly green in some spots with tiny little splashes of like a, a golden yellow, lots of blacks and grays. Some really pretty maybe almost orange speckling. Now, I saw this on the little skein here and I was like, "Well, that's really pretty." And I kept looking at it thinking that's pretty. But I ended up picking up a gray one that had like some dark blues and almost like a mint running through it and some other random colors and I was gonna get it. And I turned around and they had a Hohi Locatelli shawl up with like greens and blacks maybe and this was in it. And I looked and I think I think it was Steve was there. And I said, is that yarn? This yarn? And he's like, yeah it is. I'm like, I'm gonna get this one instead. <laughs> Because I ended up, I was like literally about to check out when I saw it. Um, which is funny because I did not realize that they had a podcast. Or, or Steve does rather, the Dramatic Knits podcast. Um, which I, you would think it would have a larger subscriber base with how awesome it is. I just watched their latest episode and I'm slightly obsessed with it. Not in a weird way. But like, they're fun to watch. Um, I think he said the girl is, I shouldn't say, I think they said that the girl that co-hosts it with him is leaving, which is sad because she was funny. But yeah, if you haven't heard of the Dramatic Knits podcast, go check it out because it's hosted by Steve from Leading Man Fiber Arts. Um, and like I said, I didn't know that. So I didn't have like that weird starstruck moment that I probably would have had had I known. <laughs> but he asked me when I was kind of looking at cars, he said, well, what are you planning on making? And my smart ass was like something with yarn. Because <laughs> I don't, I'm not one of those pick a project and then pick the yarn to go with it. I'm one of those um, pick out some pretty yarns and eventually you might find a project that works for kind of people. <laughs> so I was super excited when I got that one because I just loved the way it worked up. It works up like you wouldn't really, I mean, unless you've really worked with these yarns a lot, unlike me like, you know, still a yarn newbie, I guess. Um, it works up really, really pretty with almost like cream spots with just like little patches of the color together. And it's, oh, it's so gorgeous. I cannot wait to put something with this to make, maybe I'll just add it as like rose for a shawl, but it's just so pretty. Um, I quite love it. So like I said, I was in a speckle mood, but apparently I was also in a green, a green speckle mood. So and that was everything that I bought. I think. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I grabbed everything. I tried really hard to remember everything. I won't lie. Like I said, obviously, I've already dug into this. I had it all put away because I didn't even think about the fact that I still have to record and show everybody what I got. And I'm just so in love with it that I wanted to play with everything right, right after I got it. I'm like, oh, I want to squish this and I want to use that and I want to do this. I, yeah, I tore everything apart. But I brought it all back together to show you because it's amazing and I need to share. So after I left Lady Man Fiber Arts, I hustled right over to get a drink because <laughs> I was parched. So my mom and I ran and got drinks real quick. And then we met everybody over at the Carousel for the Podcaster Lounge where I got to meet Holly and her amazing little pineapple family. Um, I've already met Tiffany, but I got to meet Ethan and her mother, um, Cappy from The Yarn and I. I got to meet them, or her and her husband. I want to say Ron, and I'm sorry if that's wrong, because it might be. And we met Aaron and Rachel and Chaverel, and did I name everybody? Kim. The amazing Kim. I can't forget Kim, because Kim... If you've watched or seen my Instagram post, Kim went above and beyond to make this event so extra special for all of us. And I just appreciate her so much for it. But 
we did a little bit of a mini swap and a lot of the girls had buttons so i kind of felt like a loser for not having buttons so next time i'm gonna have to make my own buttons to take <laughs> um cappy from the yarn and i if you haven't seen her she does have obviously her own podcast and she is on instagram um oh she's got all her little things here deliciously dipped dripped and dabbed fibers I'm not sure. It's this shop owner, and I haven't checked out her shop. I guess I didn't realize she even had a shop. I'll have to check that out. It looks like it's an Etsy. Um, she hand she had a couple skeins or little mini skeins to choose from, and um, I took one that she had hand dyed, and it's this gorgeous little cream number with hot pink. It looks super flamingo in my opinion. So I had to take this one because I just, I loved it. And she also had little buttons, yarn and eye buttons, and nothing focuses on my camera. So I'm just going to show you a bunch of blurry stuff today, apparently. And we also did um, a thing where we kind of brought some random skeins that we weren't going to use, and we did like a de-stash swap almost. Um, and she had posted a skin that she was going to bring and Chef Earl and I both were like, mm, I want that. Well, I swapped with her first, so I totally got it. It is a lush knit and it's called Sometimes It Snows in April on the Smooth Sock Base, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, 463 yards for 100 grams. Can you see this amazingness? It's got this gorgeous white off mm, slightly antique white base it's got this amazing spring green hot pink like a tealy blue and these black speckles everywhere like a sky blue up here this hank is oh my goodness she has speckles on the back look at that this is gonna be freaking gorgeous and i about died when she posted a picture of it in our little group talk before we went. So thankfully I brought something that she wanted because I am so happy I got this. <laughs> so happy. It is so pretty. Look at that. Oh, I think it's the light blowing everything out. Maybe if I hold it. If I hold it up here it looks really good. So yeah that right there is pretty much exactly what it looks like and it's so crazy gorgeous. Love it. So that I got from Cappy. Um, Chevy Rell has this awesome color that is the Chevy Rell colorway that she brought and it's this gray. And again, my purples always look blue on camera. If I hold it back here. And if I hold it back here, it looks a little less blue. Purple and hot pink with this gray and it is gorgeous. I stink and love it. Again, pictures obviously do it more justice. And what do we got next? Um, Tiffany and Ethan from the Woolen Homestead brought some of their Sturdy Sock um, fingering in the Nebula colorway, which I'm really excited because I've been wanting to try this Nebula colorway, which it's purple, not blue. Hopefully it does this cool thing where sometimes my videos adjust when I get them on the computer instead of the camera and they look a different color. So I guess it depends maybe on what kind of video platform you're watching from not platform what kind of electronic you're watching from your screen I don't know I know on my phone everything looks a bit different than it does on my computer so we'll see it is purple though not blue and it has speckles of black and green magenta and almost like an orange it looks like it's so freaking cool you guys Oh, there's a little bit of yellow. This nebula is one I've been really, really wanting. So this is kind of like, you know, getting a lick of a ice cream cone when you really just want a whole sundae. <laughs> so this is probably going to tip, tip me over and make me uh, have to buy some, buy like a whole skein of it because I quite love it. Well, in Homestead. Again, links below. Tiffany and Ethan dye their own yard. If you haven't checked out their podcast, you're totally missing out because they're amazing. 
Um, their yarn is fantastic. This this is their yarn, and um, my Rapture Shawl, two of those were their yarn. I just, I love their yarn. The colors are amazing, and the yarn is fantastic. So check them out, too. And they gave me a little button, a little woolen homestead button. Who is next? Let's go Rachel from Treehouse Knits. Now, I got to meet Rachel, and I got to talk to her for a hot second, but I don't feel like I got to talk to her quite as much as the other girls, unfortunately. Um, she gave us she gave us a really cute little bag. It all came in this little decorative Ziploc bag. Treehouse Knits, um, Instruction Design and Enabling Fun. So she has a podcast, email, Ravelry, YouTube, website. She got these little cards and look at, look at, look at. It's a little teal owl. It's adorable. A little stitch marker on the back of her cards. It's got um, DPNs, different size straights, different size circulars, and hooks. And you can mark off which ones you have. So that's pretty cool too. It's a neat idea to have on the back of your card. It's pretty genius. So she gave out this mini in a ball. It is in the Spellbook colorway in the Snazzy Toes by Legacy Fiber Arts. I feel pretty fancy just holding this yarn. I won't even lie to you. <laughs> like I feel like one of the cool kids now. <laughs> love it. Look at that sparkle. We all know I love a good sparkle. Oh, this dang lighting. I have to work on this lighting situation. Maybe I should just order that light that I want. But it is these gorgeous browns and tans. A couple different shades of green. Or, uh, yeah, green. That's the word I'm looking for. Green. Like a mossy green and a pine green with a cream base. And it is so cool. Actually, the base reminds me quite a lot of the Miller Girls. Like, almost exactly the same. I wonder if they have the same supplier. How funny would that be? But yeah. Legacy Fiber Arts. Pretty exciting. I kind of wonder if they have the same supplier. Because everything about their yarn looks almost identical. If my camera wasn't so crappy, I would show you. Like, the ply. The Stellina. It looks really similar. <laughs> so, hey, check out the Miller Girls because uh, I think her and Legacy Fiber Arts might uh, get from the same location. Don't get me wrong. This is still awesome. And I, uh, the Spellbook colorway is just fantastic. I cannot wait to work with it. Love it. Okay. Not only that, but in her little bag... I feel like I'm missing something. I might be, but I don't think... I can't remember. I pulled everything out because I wanted to play with it and show it to my family. <laughs> um, she also makes soap, which is so cool. So she gave us all this big brick of soap. Look at this thing. It's thick. Got this cute little washi tape with birds on it. And it is in the scent Minty. The ingredients are coconut, palm, canola, olive, and essential oils, sodium hydroxide, and water. And it smells, it smells amazing. It's definitely got like a, I think, pepperminty almost? I don't know. Obviously minty. Uh, Grayson's been walking around. He loves the birds. So he's been walking around like showing everybody the birds and making everybody smell it. And he's just walking around smelling it all day. I had to put it away because he was getting a little ridiculous about it. Shoving it in people's faces. Okay. I think that's what I got here. One, two, three. I showed you four. So we'll go next to number five, which is from the Proper Pineapple, which is Holly. Um, her yarn, like Chevrolet's, is her own, her own colorway. It is the Proper Pineapple colorway. And it's a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 
fingering weight and hers is done by the iron wheel farms which funny enough i ran into earlier um they were one of the first shops i stopped at and i almost picked up something but look at these colors obviously it's got to be hot pink for holly and it's got oh, it's hard to kind of see in this light because it's weird lighting in here i won't lie um speckles of red i see like a green maybe some blue and some darker purple yeah super cool look at that it actually looks pretty pretty true to color on camera except for that might be a little more green than blue than it looks i'm just like doing shadow puppets on my face here so yeah super cool mini super squishy too it's a really nice yarn base Iron Wheel Farms. Now, when I ran into them earlier, um, unfortunately, they were one of the ones I wanted to go back to and didn't get a chance to because I really liked her speckles and the yarn that she had. I did get a card from her because I knew, just in case I didn't make it back, I wanted to be able to look her up. She also... 307 Fiber Designs on Etsy. It's her sister, I think she said. Um, 307... Yeah, 3... 307 fiber designs on Etsy. So I'm gonna have to look that up because her sister had these um, really cool designed yarn bags. And they were kind of like squared off and kind of flatter. And they had these like four petals that came out of the top with a hole so you could just kind of like pull your yarn directly from inside. I'll have to see if I can find one and insert a picture for you to show because it's a really cool design. But the first thing that popped into my head when I saw it with these four open petals was it looks like a demigorgon from Stranger Things. <laughs> it did. Seriously. If you if I if I find a picture, I want to show you this because you have to if you've seen Stranger Things and you know what a demigorgon is, your brain's probably gonna jump there too like mine did. So I told her, I said, tell your sister that she needs to get some Stranger Things fabric and like make it like Stranger Things Demigorgon because that would sell instantaneously like so I hope she does like I almost want to message her and be like listen this needs to happen because I want one <laughs> you know do like the inside get like a black Stranger Things fabric for the outside and then do the inside on red <laughs> so that when, when it's open it looks like the Demigorgon's mouth it would be so cool <laughs> so I'm going to have to look that up real quick and see. But yeah, um, Iron Wheel Farms, I really liked her color, so I'm going to have to look her up too and see if I can get some of hers. Hopefully, maybe they'll be at Ann Arbor too. And Holly, of course, gave us all these awesome giant proper pineapple buttons. The proper pineapple. They're so cute. Another amazing mini from an amazing person was Erin from Knitting Envy. I think this one does it say in here what it is knitting envy twist sack 80% superwash merino 20% nylon and oh it's in the colorway knitting envy check that out even cooler so miss Erin who's super geeky and awesome and one of my new best friends just so you know just saying so it's Chevy and all I mean really all these girls are like I said I didn't get much of a chance to talk to Rachel so next time we see each other Rachel and totally gonna have to talk to you a little bit more we were all so busy it was so crazy those two hours flew by it was insane anyway Erin um has this card and she has this cute little stitch marker which at first i thought was a cherry but then i realized it's totally an apple yarn ball it's so cool which goes perfectly with her theme because she has this awesome like tree with an apple and a snake because i mean obviously I'm, i shouldn't say apple it's a yarn ball apple which obviously has like a biblical reference to like envy and you know sins things like that which is really kind of cool but this is her colorway um looks pretty true in camera color like right there that's and that's the top of the screen i'm cutting half of it off but for some reason the color likes to pick up up there pretty good it's these gorgeous greens on this like creamy base and it's got speckles of like browns and reds through it which Maybe a little bit orange even, 
which is cool because it matches the whole tree snake apple theme. Love it. And then she gave us all buttons. Buttons. Literally, I'll pop in the picture here. My shirt was like weighed down with buttons by the time I left. It was awesome. Now, so with saving one of the most amazing ones for last because Kim, like I said previously, went above and beyond here. Um, Kim from Chasing Acorns slash Adventures in Craft. Um, I think her podcast is called Adventures in Craft and then everything else is called Chasing Acorns. Um, Kim has an Etsy store and she makes custom bags, bombs, knitting, and spinning supplies and accessories. There's a glimpse of her card, but again, links below because you can't see that. <laughs> so first off, Kim went and made us all our own name badges. Aren't those awesome? So every single one of the podcasters had their own little name badge with their little logo on it. And she made these Podcaster Meetup Michigan Fiber Festival 2018 buttons with a little sheep on them. Again, I'll post pictures because you can't see that. And then for her mini swap, she um, custom dyed some yarn for us. And it's a worsted weight. And it's literally called the MFF, which is Michigan Fiber Festival 2018. 44 yards. It's a cashmere, nylon, and superwash merino blend. And this is the gorgeous, gorgeous colorway she came up with for us. And this looks more teal on camera, but it's actually more like a super dark green. Hint of blue in it, so it's sort of tealish, but it's really piney, like a spruce, sprucey blue green. And then it's got some really pretty mauvey purples. Some gorgeous golden colors here. It looks pretty true. True, true life. Some actual greens running through it. Isn't that awesome? So for our podcast you meet up for the Michigan Fiber Festival, we have our own colorway, thanks to Kim. Like, how cool is that? Super cool. It makes it feel totally legit. We had our own colorway and our own buttons. But she had a whole bunch left and she accidentally left behind, so I have them currently. So, if any of you were there and you didn't get one, let me know. Maybe we can get them to you. Um, I know I'm going to be seeing Kim, worst case scenario, in October. Oh, there's a spider. Scary. <laughs> anyway, worst case scenario, I'll see her in October and in Arbor because she said she was coming. Um... But hopefully we're going to try and plan a meetup somewhere, kind of middle ground of all of us before then, so we can have a day of just like crafting and hanging out and things like that. So I know she said that she used to dye yarn, um, but she doesn't really do it as much anymore because she's more into the fabric portion of her business, which she does an amazing job of dyeing yarn too. I can't blame her for choosing one because it can get to be a bit much when you have more than one hobby, but... I just love it. I think it's so cool that we have our own little colorway for this year. So like I said, she does a lot of other crafts on top of knitting and things like that. She also does resin, which if you watch um, Cheverville's podcast, um, she has a coaster that Kim made out of um, resin. And she had brought all these little like tag sized ones and gave us all one. And I got this one because it's super cool. You can kind of see it's like this purple and blue with these little gold parts coming up. Again, I'll have to pop a picture because it just doesn't do it justice for the cool 3D effect that it has. It is on a string, so I wore it like a necklace the whole day. Um, but I'm probably going to put like a keychain on it and maybe make it into a keychain because I just think it's so cool and I want to have it always super neat. I love things like that. Anything that's like got like dimension but like inside super cool. That sounds lame and geeky but you know. 
Then she gave everybody little charms. So I got a little bunny. Super cute. And then she had her bags there to show everybody. And we were looking at them and admiring them and ooing and eyeing. And she said, hey, why don't you take one for a giveaway? Okay. I have a, I have a um, knit along or make along going on right now. So that would be perfect. I would love to take one for a giveaway. Thank you. And then I saw some more and I'm like, can I buy one too for me? And she's like, no, but you can take one. So we kind of had a little back and forth fit about us trying to pay her and she wouldn't take any money from us. So um, I'm going to have to just order some stuff offline from her because I feel really bad. But she showed us these bags and you guys are going to freak when you see these. Um, I had a really hard time deciding which one to give away. I think it's going to be this one. And this will be given away for my 80s make along, which ends, I believe, the 24th. If you haven't joined, just have a little bit of time. Get on it because you're going to want this bag. It is purple narwhals. <laughs> Do you see this? Purple narwhals, you guys. This is super purple too in real life, not uh, not blue. Purple narwhals. Draw a string bag, which is super cool enough, right? It's a nice long bag. Now, it looks flat, right? See that? See this flat bag? No. Kim has taken these flat bags and they have snaps on them. So even though it can be a flat bag if you would like it to be, you can just take these adorable little purple snaps and you snap it shut and now you have a squared off box bottom which sits nice and flat. On the inside it has this really gorgeous canvasy nylon and this one's gray. And you can flip this down and with the boxed bottom you pretty much have a yarn bowl sitting right here. So you can just like pop it up. It sits up real nice. I'm not doing this thing justice, I swear. This thing is amazing. Amazing. How cool is this bag? How cool is that? So you can unsnap it if you want to lay it flat, even if you're just doing that for like storage purposes. Unsnap it. Fold it back up. Got a little carabiner on there, the drawstring top. You guys, this thing is so cool. I about flipped. And I'm pretty sure she sells these on her Etsy site, so that link will be below. Purple narwhals. She had, oh my gosh, she had like Christmas ones, sock, like Christmas sock monkeys and mittens. And then she had like a mermaid one and some really cool like feathers and oh my gosh, just the most gorgeous things. So this is the one that's going to be given as a prize, even though I really love the purple narwhals. I love this one a little bit more and I almost had to fight Holly for it. <laughs> she almost took it and I'm just sitting there looking through the bag, looking over at Holly. I'm like, are you, are you going to take that one? Because if not, I totally want it. And Holly being the gem she is. Let me take it. Are you ready for this? It's octopus. <laughs> it's so cool. I got a black handle. And I am slightly obsessed with this one. It's got this little cute purple. It's like a lavender. Lavender squishy. And these are the... I'm trying to think of what those things are called. I want to call it like a toggle maybe. I'm not sure that's quite the right word. And the inside looks kind of funky in camera, but it's really this gorgeous mauve. It's like a mm, gorgeous mauve color. And I am um, maybe like a blush, a blushy pink mauve color. I don't even know, but I'm slightly obsessed with this bag. <gasps> Look, I just lined up the octopus's head like almost perfectly. <laughs> it's the little things in life that give you pleasure sometimes. Oh my gosh. I am so in love with this bag. And this again also has the snap bottoms. And I think I think her cards in here that shows her. I think I may have broke it off that was the other one. I'll give you the details here in a second. But she's got her little chasing acorns tag on there too, which is awesome. This is definitely a style I've not seen on any other bags. So I think it's really, really unique. This is called her Snap Bags and Medium. 
chasingacorns.etsy.com. You guys, you've got to check these things out. Her prices are ridiculously low. I think she should be charging way more because the quality of these is just freaking amazing. So you definitely need to go check out her Etsy store and see if you can snag one of these before she realizes that they're worth more. <laughs> I'm obsessed. And thank you so much, Kim, for, I mean, seriously, you made a Michigan Fiber Festival 2018 colorway. Like, we have to do this again next year just so I can see what you do for next year's colorways because this has to be a thing now. And buttons specifically for the event, like, that is so amazing. You are just so sweet, and I cannot wait to hang out with you again, too. I absolutely loved meeting all of the podcasters and hanging out at the podcaster lounge in the carousel area that I probably stayed a little bit longer than I meant to. I was exhausted by the end of the day. My sinuses were just, ugh. I was like swollen and in so much pain. It was totally worth it. Um, the only other thing we did before we got to the meetup, because we left right after the meetup, we were, we were whipped, we were done. But before the meetup, we ran real quick through and saw the Angora bunnies. And I think they were judging some right as we were walking through at that time. Um, we didn't even get to go see the goats or the sheep because we just, we were done by the end of the day. We spent that whole first part shopping and then the last two hours just talking our butts off. And I got to see the Angora bunnies and some alpacas. They were doing some alpaca judging, which was really cool. Um, I was laughing because some of the alpacas must have been there for like the shearing demonstration. And they had just had a nice fresh little haircut. And a couple of, them, couple of them had little fancy rhinestone halters on. And I, I took a couple pictures of them. But I kept looking at my mom going, you know, I think alpacas are kind of like the poodles of the fiber community. With their fluffy little hair and all their little sparkly rhinestone things. It just, oh, they have my heart. They're so precious. But that's it. I say that's it. And I've probably been talking at you for like an hour now. I tried to keep this as a separate video from the regular podcast because there was just so much to talk about and go over and show. Um, and I know some people aren't quite into looking at, you know, the haul videos and things like that, but I just love these all so much that I really wanted to share them with you. And, you know, if you haven't ever been to not even just the Michigan Fiber Festival, which was amazing and next year I think we're I'm gonna try to see if I can't maybe uh go camping for the weekend so I don't have to try and shove it all into one day with you know six hours of driving <laughs> we'll see we'll see what I can do but camping would be amazing but if you haven't ever gone to even just a local fiber festival or someone you know somewhere around your area see what there is just google it and see if you can find something because it's it's a completely different experience than just like going to a yarn store. You really have to try it. You just, you just have to try it. You have to go there at least once and experience it because the excitement and the community and just the amazing yarniness is, you tend to get like a fiber high from it. And it takes a while to come down because everything is just so exciting and so lovely and everybody is so nice and you definitely need to try it if you haven't. I highly recommend fiber festivals. I cannot wait for the next one. I think Kim said there's one maybe next month somewhere. I'm gonna have to ask her and see because uh, I might need to go to that one too. If not, I'll be going to the Ann Arbor one towards the end of October to see all these amazing girls again and pick up lots more goodies. I better start saving, though. <laughs> this stuff can add up pretty quick. I literally saved babysitting money for this. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Worth it. Worth every penny. I am so happy with all my purchases. Um, so, yeah. 
that's all I got to talk about for the Michigan Fiber Festival. So if you guys made it out, you know, leave me a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed it. And um, if you have any pictures, you know, go ahead and share them over maybe on our Ravelry page. And maybe I'll post some over there too for you guys. But yeah, so I'll be posting a podcast here pretty soon. So keep your eye open for that. And until next time, happy crafting, guys. We'll see you later.